is an IBM PS2 Model 30. It's been heavily used over the years. It has some adorning stickers on it. This is the 8086 processor model. Um, the direct IBM number is 8530-021 and there is the serial number of it which happens to be exactly the same as what's printed in this embossed label that is stuck on it right there. Typically these machines as opposed to the Model 30 286's always had the orange switch and the 286 models had the white switch. This machine erroneously has a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. That's incorrect. It should be a 720k drive, which would not have that little badge on there. But it's what was in the machine. It only works at 720. I've had this machine for many, many years. And it's been through a lot of use over those years. Sadly, the hard drive has passed away, as most have in these machines over the years. Uh, I know B. Bishop PCM. If you check out his channel, he just put a video up on the Model 30 just like this, and he has a working hard drive. You'll also notice that there is a sticker on the front which was put on by somebody else that says Made in USA, and for good reason, because right over here, it does say indeed, Made in USA. How about that, people? Finally, a computer that's not a craptastic Chinese piece of junk. And look metal fan grill as well. The ports on it, obviously your power that my hand is half covering, your PS2 keyboard and mouse, and yes that is where we get the term PS2 from, it's from these series machines. 25 pin parallel, 25 pin serial, and an MCGA otherwise known or uses the same type of connector as VGA. This one also has a 2400 BPS modem in it right there. Something to note about the uh, MCGA and earlier VGA connectors is you'll notice there is one pin that is blanked out. So you will need a monitor that will plug into that. Record old service monitor with the dead LED back, uh, cold cathode backlight has such a connector with that blanked out so it will plug in. This machine is not turned on in many, many, many years. So hopefully things won't go bang, but I expect being made in the USA, we have at least half a shot at it. But I do want to pop the hood and take a peek inside to see what critters might be living in it. So for that, you will need a T20 Torx bit. It's not a security bit. You can also use a flat uh, screwdriver, but T20 is the right size. So we'll just finish taking all these screws out here and then we'll be all set. Put the screws out, just push back and then lift up. Let's see if I can get it or I might need two hands. And that's what we have. It's even designed without funny angles on it or anything so it'll just sit there for you. Well, it appears the inside is rather well preserved. Um, you have your floppy cable with two connectors. These are the proprietary PS2 style ones that you don't find elsewhere. Uh, there's two because this one is longer as you can see. You would put it there in case you'd have a dual floppy model instead of a hard drive. This hard drive that's here like I said is dead. It was made by IBM Japan. Um, the drive had problems over the years and it finally just gave up the ghost. Um, I did try repairing it once and I was successful. Uh, what would happen was the drive would kind of make a resynchronization sound where it would drive the heads back. It's a stepper motor drive. It would drive the heads back and then, uh, try to reread but you were getting sector not found and general failures and all kinds of stuff like that but I started hearing a scraping noise coming from inside this drive so I opened the drive up and very carefully and with the absolute slightest and I mean slightest amount of force I took my pinky nail and went under the top head and bent it up 
just slightly. And like I said, just slightly. And that was enough to cure it, put it back together, and it ran for another two years. That was it. But this drive was aged to begin with. Uh, the power supply, as you can see here, has a rod that connects it to the front here to drive it. And there is a key lock, which I do not and never did have the keys for, with a uh, keyboard uh, switch to disable the keyboard. There's the modem we spoke of before. Practical Peripherals brand, if anybody knows what that is, with a big honking transducer on it right there. Here's the system beeper. This one always was a little squeaker or beeper instead of a big honking speaker like the PC had, but whatever and these are 30 pin memory chips that are in there um, I think at this point this battery is probably dead but I think it's time to hook this thing up and see if it will power on the switch is off let me get things plugged in and we'll give it a shot now like I said I fully do not expect this uh, machine to actually boot up because I know the hard drive is toast but let's turn it on and see if we get post or anything uh oh I think we got nothing yeah we got nothing and I am smelling something that I don't care for so I have it precariously in the off position and we shall unplug this and it seems that it Time was not kind to this Model 30. That's really a shame. I used to like this machine. But something has gone horribly wrong. Most likely tantrum capacitors somewhere in either the power supply or on the board. It smells like the supply. But at least they didn't go bang. But of course, I'm not going to just leave you hanging there. You ever see the price is right with the golf game? where the contestant misses and it's hole in one and then the host walks over and hits a button and it says hole in one and the thing turns around and it says or two a spare I don't know where I got this from I have no idea if it works this may be the end of the road for it I have no idea but uh, I just pulled the uh, screws out of it. We'll open it up and see if anything's living in it. This one is going to need two hands. Okay, here we have exactly the same. Same type of looking hard drive here. The one that Beat Bishop PCM had had a different hard drive in it. Same memory, everything is exactly the same except it does not have the modem in it. Let me hook this one up and we'll hope this one doesn't go bang and it turns on for us. Okay, time for a smoke test. Like I said, I don't even know where this one came from, so I have no idea what will happen. Very sickly sounding drive, but something, anyway. Um, I don't know if it is posting. Yeah, I think so. I don't have any video display for some reason, which is a little odd. Perhaps it's too out of whack for this uh, monitor. I have no idea. Which I can't make it do anything. It says auto config and it just goes away. Interesting, but you did hear the scraping of the hard drive there. We'll power it again. See, that's not a normal sound. That's for damn sure. But it is completing post, and it's happy about it.
Oh, something's happening on the screen. It doesn't like this video because it's MCGA and it probably doesn't support it. We got ways around that. Here is a disc that is high density, but I've taped over it. This is the Model 30 Diagnostics disc. I want to see if it'll boot it at least. And then we'll dig out the other monitor and continue on. Not happy either way. Let's see if control of the lead will do it. Yeah. That sounds happy. Okay, so it's working, and that definitely is the beep of the diagnostics diskette, that's for sure. So, I'll just wiggle that. I know it won't make any difference. I'll try another monitor. This is not turning out the way I wanted it to. We're over in Club J. I brought the machine over here because I have some nice CRT monitors. Unfortunately, that did not have the right connector. But this one did, and it did the same thing. In fact, I can shut it off now, because uh, it wouldn't work. So, I tried another LCD on it, got the same thing with those lines. So I actually went and I dug out my NEC multi-sync. This thing will fucking read anything. I got the same lines. Here's the other LCD monitor that uh, I tried with it. I don't have a stand for this, so... It is what it is. Uh, this also didn't work. So I figured, well, I don't want to take the power supply out of the other system. And I realized it's standard AT style. So here's one with lots of rust on the bottom. I don't know if it works. I have that hooked up now. And the only thing I really remember about AT style power supplies is when you plug them in, some of them had red, this one does, somewhere, I don't know. It, it may be wrong for it, it may blow it up, it may work, I don't know, so we're just going to go. The only thing I do know is that if this had a red wire here, and you plug them this way, which they're not supposed to be able to be because they are keyed, you can see the little key right there, which is different on that one. The saying was, red to red you're dead, black to black no flack. Well, let's hope they're right. I don't know what will happen here. We'll just find out. Nothing? Nothing. Alright. Well, that might be a motherboard on here. Usually it's these capacitors, those orange ones back there that will explode. So, yeah, I guess this project is kind of dead in the water. Apparently there's something wrong with the main board on the other one, or it's not outputting the right video. And unless the supply doesn't work, which is possible, that's probably going to be about the end of the road. What I wanted to do for you was run the floppy drive seek test. Because this thing is dubstep through and through. But unfortunately, the Model 3286 does not run the same diagnostics. I will not run the same test because I had done that back in the day and it's not the same. So alas, this project uh, didn't get off the ground. I do apologize, but there's nothing I really could do. I thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.